So today we're going to run through a model answer to an exam question for GCSE chemistry on acids and then the titration method and calculations. So sodium hydroxide neutralises sulfuric acid. Part A tells us that sulfuric acid is a strong acid. And then it asks us what is meant by a strong acid. Sulfuric acid completely ionises or dissociates into ions, so when dissolved in water. So the next question asks us to write the ionic equation for this neutralisation reaction. Include state symbols. Now we can see it's out of two marks. So ionic means we need to use ions or charged atoms. Now we should know that acids dissociate when they dissolve in water, creating H plus ions. And obviously if that's dissolved in water, your state symbol is going to be AQ, which stands for aqueous, dissolved in water. And we're looking at reacting that with sodium hydroxide. So in sodium hydroxide, you've got a sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. Now our hydrogen goes to form water over here, so it's going to react with the hydroxide ion to do that. Again, we said that's dissolved in water, so it's going to be aqueous. And then that goes to create water, which is a liquid. So one mark for the equation, one mark for all three state symbols. A student used a pipette to add 25 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide of unknown concentration to a conical flask. The student carried out a titration to find out the volume of 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid needed to neutralise the sodium hydroxide. Describe how the student would complete the titration. So here they're looking for us to describe the method we would use to carry out that titration. Then they tell us you should name a suitable indicator and give the colour change that would be seen. For our first mark, obviously we need to add our indicator. So I'm going to choose phenol failing and we're going to add that to the conical flask. Now, it's important to note here that in our conical flask is sodium hydroxide, so our indicator is going to start off in alkali. So mark number two is for saying that your sulfuric acid is going to be placed in a burette because we're going to be measuring a varying volume. So then you would add that dropwise while stirring your conical flask until the indicator just changes colour and that's going to give you the most accurate volume. And then four is to give the colour change that would be seen at that end point of that titration or when your alkali is just neutralised. So like we said, we're going from an alkali, we're neutralising it. So if we're using phenolphenine, that's going to go from pink to colourless. Now you could also use... 
methyl orange, which would turn from yellow in alkali to red, or you could use litmus, which again would turn from blue in alkali to red. So part D, the student carried out five titrations. Her results are shown in the table below. Concordant results are within 0.1 centimetres cubed of each other. Use the student's concordant results to work out the mean volume. So our concordant results are 27.05, 27.15 and 27.15. Titrations 1 and 2 are more than 0.1 away from any of those values. So to work out our mean, we're simply going to add those together, divide by the number there are, which is 3. And that's going to get us 27.12. We're going to go to two decimal places because that's what I used there. The equation for the reaction is given again below. Calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide. Give your answer to three significant figures. We've seen earlier that our concentration of sulfuric acid is 0.1. Our volume of sodium hydroxide is 25. For sulfuric acid, we've got a concentration of 0.1. And we worked out here that we've got a mean volume of 27. 0.12 centimetres cubed. Sodium hydroxide, we don't know the concentration, but we know that the volume is 25 centimetres cubed. So our first step is to work out the number of moles of sulfuric acid. And we're going to do that by using moles equals volume times concentration. Now it's important to note that volume is measured in decimeters cubed. Here it's given in centimeters cubed. To get from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed we need to divide by a thousand. So we're going to do 27.12 divided by a thousand times 0 0.1 2.712 times 10 to the minus 3. Now if we look at our equation we'll see that for every mole of sulfuric acid we have 2 moles of sodium hydroxide or it is said to be 1 you know, to 2 mole ratio. Now to get from the number 1 to the number 2 we need to multiply by 2. So to get the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, again, we need to multiply by 2. 5.424 times 10 to the minus 3. Now for our final step, we need to work out the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So we need to do moles divided by volume. which is 0 0.217. So one mark for the number of moles of sulfuric acid, one mark for the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, one mark for how to work out concentration, and then one mark for putting that to three significant figures. Okay, so last part question F says the student did another experiment using 20 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide, so that's the volume, with a concentration of 0.18 moles per decimeter cube. Then they tell you that the relative formula mass of sodium hydroxide equals 40, and they ask you to calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide in 20 centimeters cubed of this solution. So you have volume and concentration, so you can work out 
on both moles. Gets us 3.6 times 10 to minus 3 moles. And then to convert that into mass, we use mass equals moles times relative formula mass. equals 0.144 grams.